Welcome to the Thunderbird Farm Handcrafted. My name is Genevieve and today we are going to be making the perfect teacher ID holder. Uh, I am so excited to share this pattern hack I created from two Sally Tomato patterns, which I'll share in a little bit, uh, and uh, get these out to you guys to sew, to make for your kids' teachers for Valentine's Day or maybe uh, a teacher appreciation day. Uh, I surveyed a bunch of teachers to figure out what exactly did they need in their ID tag holder. Uh, there's so many out there, but every time I talk to any of my teacher friends, they were telling me that the, the ID card holders that are out there just weren't exactly what they were looking for. So I am going to share this pattern hack today and hope you'll come along with me. If you have not already, please hit subscribe so that you can join us. Uh, every week I share a new tutorial uh, or uh, something regarding crafty businesses. Uh, and I hope that you'll, you'll be a part of that with us here at the Thunderbird Handcrafted. I do put timestamps across the uh, bottom of the video so that you can skip ahead or, or go back or go find your place again when you're ready to go and sew this. So feel free to take advantage of that. All of the supplies, everything that we use is always in the details for you, as well as all the links to be able to follow me and our family farm uh, on all the channels uh, that we have social media. So thank you again for joining us today. We're gonna use up some of this vinyl and cork stash that you have and make these perfect teacher ID card holders. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I like some simple sews. Who doesn't, right? Who doesn't like a sew that's quick, gets your sew mojo going? Uh, and one of those for me is little things that I can gift or give um, to, you know, the people in my life, my kids' lives, our family, um, the people that are in my community, things that go really well at a craft fair uh, or a vendor event. Uh, those are, are typically the items that I find I get the most joy out of sewing. The one thing I do love about that process is kind of the research that goes along with finding out what is the item that really is uh, what people are looking for. Uh, and so this a uh, particular sew today is one of those uh, that I really did some research and asked a lot of teachers, um, you know, what did they really need in an ID card holder? Uh, because I, f I found that many of them, when I would, would see them, I would, they would not have like the zipper one that they, they didn't really use. Um, you know, like they really were not using what was out on the market, um, for very long until they tried to find another one that would work for them. Um, so I asked a bunch of questions of my local teachers, uh, to see, you know, what exactly did they want in an ID card template, uh, ID card holder. Uh, so one of the things that, that many of them said was, listen, we really just need the ID in the front. Okay. Like, like that just... That's all it needs to be there. We don't need the zipper, we don't need any of that, but we do need some area for some cards. You know, my my regular licensed ID, if you know I need to be out of the building or anything like that, maybe my debit card or a credit card, um, but that's pretty much it. Other than maybe a pocket that has, you know, like where I can slip some cash uh, or some tickets, a lot of teachers, um, a lot of schools have some type of discipline, um, you know, reinforcement type of fun thing that they give kids tickets for well be, you know, good behavior or, you know, really doing a good job that day. They, they hand out tickets. And so they needed an area that they could easily access to get those tickets uh, out when they're, you know, in the hallway and they see a kid being kind to someone. Um, so a lot of them said they needed something like that. A lot of them also said they needed something that wasn't permanently attached to a lanyard uh, that, you know, some of them, it was okay for them to have it clipped to maybe their jeans or clipped to a, a bag uh, that it didn't necessarily need to be on a lanyard, but they would like the, op the option to have it clipped to a lanyard. So that was the other piece of, of the puzzle. So I did a lot of research on this specific pattern hack. Uh, and then once I had that information, I had to find... Either one, I had to create that pattern myself, which I find sometimes it's nice to have inspiration elsewhere. 
Uh, and I think a lot of us do that. If you're a pattern hacker, let me know that you're, you're a pattern hacker in the comments because I'm definitely uh, a pattern hacker. And I feel like one of the things that um, hacking a pattern, I think shows such the utmost respect to the pattern maker themselves because um, they really did a lot of work to get the pattern to where it is. So the two patterns that you're going to need, um, one is free and one is a paid um, from Sally Tomato. Uh, the first one is the Carly. So you probably have seen the Carly. You probably have done the Carly if you follow um, Okra Roots or Sally Tomato, but it is an ID card little wallet pouch, okay? So we're gonna need that. Uh, and then you're also going to need their free luggage tag pattern, all right? Um, and this is where we're going to get kind of our shape from. So I'm going to show how to cut these out, how to get your measurements, what to do. But those are the two patterns you're going to need. It's great. This pattern is great for like your cork extras, your um, vinyl extras. It's also a great uh, edge painting practice. Um, if you're new like me to edge painting, this is a great edge painting practice uh, pattern. Uh, so I'm gonna show you here uh, with this one here. So here is the ID uh, card holder. So this is, the, this is in cork. Uh, and so I have my little ID card holder here. On the back, I have two little card pockets, all right? So one for their regular ID, one for their um, debit card if they need it. But then they can pinch this open and there's a deep pocket right here for them to put their cash or their, their tickets in there so they can be held all in one place. So this is what we're making today. I hope you'll join me. It doesn't take much. It's a very quick, so you can pump a bunch of these out. You can also um, add a lanyard. So I'm gonna show how I make my lanyards out of webbing um, for this, uh, but just a really fun, quick sew today. That's perfect for those teachers in your lives, nurses probably, um, just anyone that you feel you need a quick gift that works someplace that they need to have a little ID card. So let's get started. Here are our supplies that you're going to need. Like I said, you are gonna need the luggage tag, free download from Sally Tomato. You're also going to need the Carly uh, pattern from Sally Tomato. The Carly pattern is the only one that you have to purchase. Um, I also would highly recommend a um, vertical uh, template from Okra Roots. Uh, this is super helpful in making these. Uh, it's really some of what I based the hack uh, of these patterns off of. So I highly recommend grabbing one of these from Jess over at Okra Roots if you don't have them. She might actually, I'm not sure, I'm gonna have to double check this. Um, she might actually have a free download of the template, I'm not sure. Um, but these are just great to have on hand, especially if you're gonna be making more of these um, or several of them, it just makes it a lot quicker. Uh, you're gonna need your hardware, so you're gonna need two. Um, these are the half inch uh, lobster clasps, um, one of them, one of them each. I'm making two today. Uh, and then uh, if you are gonna add the lanyard, you're going to need the key ring with the lanyard um, holder as well. Uh, so I will have links to where I got mine. Uh, if you are doing the lanyard, you are going to need some sort of webbing. This is a half inch webbing. You can use up to, to one inch, I would say, um, is, is perfectly fine. I do have quarter inch uh, double-sided tape really important for this project. It helps keep everything kind of together and where you need it. Uh, you are going to need an air erase marker, an X-Acto knife. I use uh, the eight gauge clear um, vinyl for the ID window um, from Wonderground. And then I have just some spare um, vinyl that I've been using for some other projects. So I'm going to make uh, these out of that. So that's really all of the supplies you're going to need. Uh, I do have, you can see my pattern right here that I have created from these two patterns. And I'm just gonna show you how to create those uh, and how to cut everything out. So let's get started. One thing I did forget real quick is you are going to need your ruler, your mat and your um, cutter. 
because we're going to cut out the, sh the shapes first and then exacto knife them to where we need them to be. So you are going to need your rotary blade and a, a measuring tool and your mat. All right. All right. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut out your pieces from the luggage tab pattern that we need. So we only, we need the this one here, the interior and the exterior. The other pieces you do not need for this, but just cut them out the way that they are done on the pattern. But one of the things we are going to cut off is we're going to cut off this tab piece here. We're not going to be needing that. And then we're going to cut again the the interior piece as well so we are cutting those two pieces from this pattern just the way that they're done on the pattern There's that piece. And then from the Carly, we're going to cut this card slot. Template. Okay, so those are the three pattern pieces we need. Now you're gonna need a little bit of washi tape for this because we're gonna be piecing these two pieces together like so, okay? Just like that. So I'm just gonna take a piece of washi tape. I have A button up to B for one side. And now I'm just going to put another piece on this side just to strengthen it. Okay. And now we're going to take a ruler, whatever size you have, and we're just going to find where it begins to turn on this pattern. That's where we want to um, kind of have our rulers uh, stopping where we're going to cut our line. So I'm just kind of holding that in place, taking my X-Acto knife and cutting across like so to make it straight. And then the same over on the opposite side. I'm just gonna take it and make it straight like so. So there's our template for the internal part of the pattern. So when you're done with this little piece here, it should be, let's see, five eighths, I think. One, two, three, no, three eighths. So it's three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch is how wide this little strap is. And then from the turn to the other turn it is one two um two and a half I would say maybe a little bit slightly a little bit longer not much um but that's how long it is from place to place so this is our template for our internal piece all right and then we're going to cut a piece that we're going to use this template with, and we're going to cut our card slot piece. Okay. Um, we're going to cut two. Um, one's going to be cut out like this, and one is going to be just a specific measurement. So we're going to get to that part. But this is how 
you need this piece, this pattern piece. You can see this is the one that's been very used. Um, and this pattern piece from the two patterns I had you get from Sally Tomato. All right, let's get to our exact measurements that we need to cut. The first measurement you're going to need is your ID uh, window piece. Uh, and so I always do those um, three by two and a half. So we're going, oh, three and a half by two and a half, excuse me. Yeah, so I always do those three and a half by two and a half. So I'm gonna, so I did the three and a half. So now I'm going to do the two and a half. It's always so hard to see this. Sometimes I like to put the paper underneath it this way and it makes it a little bit easier. And I usually cut out a bunch of these at a time because I know that I'm going to be using them. Let's see, is this two and a half? Oh, my Nana eyes. Yes. All right, so I have two of the windows. All right, so I need that. Now I'm going to cut my vinyl. So one of the things to think about is if your vinyl is directional, how do you want it to, to look? Um, so since this vinyl is directional, uh, I am going to cut for the um, exterior where this ID template part is going to be, is going to be this direction. I'm not too concerned if the other way is the opposite direction because um, I just want to use up this vinyl. But keep that in mind as far as your fabric, which direction you want it to go. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece three by nine and a half. So I'm going to first get rid of this edge here. Okay. And we need three. And then nine and a half. So let's see here. Nine and a half. Okay. So that's for that piece. Okay. Now we're going to cut that internal piece that goes with this part of our pattern, all right? And that is going to be 11 and three quarters by three. So I'm just going to measure that 11 and three quarters by three. I need to get a new ruler here. This baby has seen her days. 11 and three quarters by three. So there's that piece, okay? That goes with this part of our pattern, okay? And now we wanna cut our card slots, which, which are two and a half by three and a quarter, okay? We wanna make sure they're the right direction. All right, so we're gonna need another one, two and a half. By three and a quarter. All right, so we have two of those. So now we can begin the X-Acto knife piece and drawing out our template so that we're ready to sew it. All right, so the first piece that we're going to prep is our little card slots on the back. So one of them is going to be the one where you could put your 
um, bag tag, um, you know, whatever you want to put on the outside here, you could put a bag tag or even a put a, we can put a little woven label underneath if you want. Um, I, I'll show that when we sew it. Uh, but you are going to need at least one of these. So I usually flip it to the back, just hold it in place and use my air erase pen to trace it. And then get my X-Acto knife and cut it out. I did see that Hannah Woodworking is coming out with like a really cool new X-Acto knife handle that is retractable, which is nice. So now those are my two card slot pockets for the back. Now I'm going to take this piece, which is our interior piece and this pattern piece. Okay. And you can see I have edge here. All right. So after a while you can just line this up, but until you're there, you can measure it. So there should be a quarter inch on either side of your pattern. All right. So I just try to line that up the best I can. Put a piece of washi tape to hold it to my mat, okay? And then the same way over here, you should have about a quarter inch and about a quarter inch and then where is the end? There it is. Put a piece of washi tape to hold it to your mat so you can draw it and then you can cut it out. So now what I want to do is we're not going to draw from here. We're just going to draw from, from the inside. So we're just going to continue that slant down and follow your pattern like so. Continue the slant. Like so. Now when I pull it up, or pull it out, I'll just pull, just pull it out, and you can see exactly what I drew, all right? That's what we're going to exacto knife out. Okay, on both sides. All right, so there we have the internal piece of our ID, te ID template, all right? Card slots and internal piece, all right? So I'm just gonna pick this up, set it to the side, and now we're gonna do this piece. So because when this flips around, this is gonna be upside down, we gotta remember we want that to the front because this is directional. So this is the side that I'm going to want my ID. Um, so I'm gonna fold this in half just to find where my center is and just kind of make a little mark underneath on both sides of where that's at, okay? So then I can hold this in place and I'm going to mark a line like so. I'm gonna mark the window, okay? And then I'm gonna mark, flip it over here, all right? And I'm gonna mark again that line. I just wanna, so you can see it. All right, so there's the line right across, okay? If you want to, you can find your center again with your, because this does look nice if you do it this way. 
You can find the center again on the outside and mark your vinyl with your vinyl pen and mark a line to stitch a, a top stitch across the bottom here. That does look nice. Um, I'll do that when I get over to the machine, but I do do that as well. So now we're just gonna cut out our ID window here. All right, so there we go. Now, while we're here, we're gonna prep to go over to the sewing machine. So I'm going to need my double-sided tape. And, oh my goodness, where's the ends? Not seeing them today. So I'm gonna need a piece of double-sided, two pieces of double-sided tape for this because I want to put it in that top part where I drew that line on both edges. Okay, and I'm gonna fold those down over. You can do clips, but I found it's nice to have that double-sided tape there, it helps a lot. Okay, so you're gonna wanna do that. Then we're gonna take um, a piece of our window, right? All right, and we're going to just put a little bit of double-sided tape on the top and the bottom there to hold that in place for us. Centering it so you know you're going to catch it with your stitches. Okay. Sometimes I'll bring this part a little bit down a little bit further just to make sure that when people are putting their cards in, it doesn't get caught over it. So, all right, we have that piece prepped to go top stitch. Now, the other piece that we'll do when we, after we top stitch this, is we'll come back and we'll line these up so that the card slots are on the back. All right, so we'll do that after we top stitch. But the other thing we need to do is prep our internal piece to top stitch. So that's this piece. And this is, this is a little tricky, but you wanna to try to roll this up. Now, depending on the thickness of your vinyl or your cork, the harder this gets. If it's pretty thick, it, it definitely takes some finagling. But I roll it up and then I slide on my lobster claw. Thicker vinyls are harder. And then just make sure that this is the right direction. And then I try to line, line this up as best as possible. The main part is making sure this top area is lined up pretty nicely. You can always exacto knife it a little bit later. This edge down here does not matter if it does not match, but this part up here, that's what matters if it matches. And I'm just gonna take a piece of double-sided tape. I'm gonna put it in this top area here, like so, just to hold that in position where I want it. Like so. All right. So we're going to stitch this, top stitch this piece. Then we're gonna top stitch our two edges and around our ID window. And then we're going to also top stitch just the top of these two to get them ready to put them on to the back of the template. And we'll do that all over at the machine. So let's go head over there. The main thing with any vinyl project or cork is to make sure 
you have enough of bobbin. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think I'll have enough, hopefully. Let's see. Mm, maybe we better wind one. Definitely, like, it's decent, but it's uh, it could, could pose a problem. So we're going to wind... We're going to wind another one just, just in case, because that's the worst thing that can happen is that you don't have enough of bobbin and you poke holes, especially in a smaller project. It's easy to see. So let's wind a bobbin. All right. Now we wound a bobbin. So we're good to go. Like I said, really important with any vinyl project, make sure your bobbin is full. Um, we are going to now top stitch all of our um, pieces to get ready to piece them together. Uh, and we're also going to put a bag tag on this, which I forgot. So I'm going to go grab one of those. All right, so I got my bag tag to put on, but this is also the part where you could put a woven label. If you haven't seen um, sewing blurbs yet, uh, it's a collaboration between uh, Lauren Mormonio, uh, Nancy over at Fabric Therapy, and Kayla over at Carolina Little Stitches. Uh, and it's just really cute. The first uh, month we got these little cute uh, organizers. So I think I'm going to add this treat yourself one to this so you can see how that's done. Um, but this, it's just a cute little way to also never have enough woven labels. And this might be a little thing to treat yourself with for um, a nice little Valentine's gift or birthday gift or any time of year gift uh, if you like woven labels. So this is a fun project to add your woven labels to that they're really seen. All right, so I'm going to set the woven label aside, but I am going to position my bag tag. So I do need a piece of double-sided tape. These labels that I get that are like faux leather, they come from Minimize Shop on Etsy. And I'm just gonna eyeball the center here. That looks good. I'm gonna my stitch length. All right, so we're gonna put this little tag on quick. And then what I do is I just pull, pull these through both sides and tie them off and burn off the edges. My tails here are very long. All right, now I'm just gonna do a top stitch across this one and a top stitch across this one. All right, about an eighth of an inch. And I do back stitch at the beginning and the end of these. All right, so those, those are done. Now we're going to top stitch across the top here, across the top here. We're going to do our window, and then I am going to do my stitch line across the bottom. <clears throat> Back stitch again at the beginning and the end. start my 
card slot up at the top corner. We're just gonna do an eighth of an inch all the way around. Just kind of see where I'm gonna land here. As you can see, I did not back stitch. With that, I left my tassels so I can pull them through on the other side and tie them off. Okay. And now I am, I did, you always want to double check, did I catch, you know, the window? And now I do want to find my center here, just so that I can stitch a little top stitch along the bottom. So I'm just going to mark it on either side. And then lay it down. And now I'm just going to do a top stitch straight across there. And again, I back stitch these. edges down on everything okay so there we have our ID window piece now we're going to top stitch this piece, our, inter our internal piece. And we're just gonna, from the front, we wanna top stitch an eighth of an inch from here, up, across, down, and over. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. sure you're not hitting your your hardware but try to get as close as you can and it's usually about two stitches at the top and then here's the tricky part because you might need a jumper here to get it to move sometimes I do sometimes I don't That's that. Clip those, burn those edges down. All right, so now we have to piece it all together. So the first thing, we're gonna just set this guy aside. We're not gonna need this one till the very end, um, but we are going to need this one. So you're gonna flip it this direction so that your window is upside down. And we're going to get a piece of double-sided tape. Just a tiny piece like that, all right? And we're going to put that on the very bottom of here. And then we're going to position in the center. You can eyeball it as best you can. Um, right where our top stitch line is, is where 
the top of this card slot is going to meet. All right. We're going to just tack this down. I just do a little front and back stitch, eighth of an inch. All right. So you just want to try to hold this. You could um, put a clip there if you feel you need it. All right. And we're just going to go straight across and back again. All right. And then we're going to clip our stitches. All right, and then we're going to take our one with our bag tag and we're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be right like almost at the halfway point of that t that T area. And you just wanna make sure you're straight, okay? This is where a clip is helpful. Clips are helpful here just to hold it where you want it. Make sure it's positioned the way you want it, okay? And then our little woven tag, what I like to do is take another little piece of sticky tape just to hold that woven tag in place. And I place it right underneath our stitching that we did on that one. And then position our woven tag in place. Make sure it's straight and centered. If you want to do another little piece of double-sided tape just to hold everything, you can put a piece of double-sided tape here. If your machine will handle it. Okay. And now we're just gonna do an eighth of an inch. We're gonna start right at our stitch on our top stitch on the main piece, okay? We're gonna back stitch the beginning and the end. I usually like to go over the two card slots. And then we're gonna do an eighth of an inch all the way around, back stitching again here at the end, ending at our, at our uh, stitching at the top there. Stop your stitches at your top stitch there and then back stitch over those two card slots just to hold them in place. Like so, we're gonna clip our stitches. And burn any edges we need. All right, so there we have our external part. We have our two card slots here. Now we're gonna add it to our main internal piece. All right, so we're gonna get our ID window, find that center point where we st top stitched, okay? And it should go a little bit over the top there, if you can see how it is on mine. There's my top stitch on the bottom there. It's a little bit above the top. And this is where I do use clips to help me keep it in place. And we're just gonna do an eighth of an inch top stitch, back stitch at the beginning and the end along this side and the same on this side. All right, so now we're gonna top stitch on both sides, back stitch at the beginning end at the quarter inch uh, seam allowance. Okay. 
there we go. Now we're just going to burn down our ends our, of, our, of our threads. Make sure everything looks nice. And then what I like to do here is also take it over to my table and just trim an eighth of an inch off of either side so that this here is nice and flush. That also makes it really nice when you go to edge paint it. All right, so we're just gonna take our ruler and our rotary cutter we're going to just trim it down an eighth of an inch on both sides just to make it nice and flush. So if we, when we edge paint it, it looks real nice. And there we go. There we have our ID tag. When I edge paint it, I usually just edge paint this, this uh, two sides and then these right here. To make a lanyard for these is pretty straightforward. I just cut webbing, um, a yard of webbing. And then I take this over to my machine and I have it turned so that when it's on my neck, it's like so, all right? And now I'm just gonna go and top stitch right across just like that at the very bottom. I'm just gonna stay stitch that so it stays in place before I come over and clamp it into the lanyard holder. All right, the other thing that I do also, especially for webbing, is I do burn down the edge of the webbing. That way, hopefully it does not fray. So I do that. Then I have my little keychain lanyard piece my three in one glue. I'm just gonna put a little bit of three in one glue right inside there. Just like I do for my wristlets. I'm gonna set my webbing in there like so. I tried to pinch it a little bit just so it's where I want it and centered. Okay and then put it in my press and press it down. Trying not to get the keychain piece. There we go. And there you have a lanyard so that it can be clipped on or clipped off of there however you'd like. And we finished our ID card. So what part in particular of this so is the healing part for me? I think that it's one of those um, sews for me, but any hack for me, I feel like the healing part is in like the kind of research and the digging and, and the figuring out, um, uh, finding something that's going to work for what uh, the purposes. So in this case, finding something when I was hearing from teachers, when I had the little um, zip wristlets or the little zip ID um, lanyards at my craft table, that they really didn't need this or they didn't really want that or they wanted this. Um, I feel like that's the healing part for me is converting a pattern that I know is a really great pattern into something that is going to be specifically used for someone else. I think Sometimes we get in the habit of just doing the next pattern and doing the next pattern and not thinking about the needs that are out there um, that we could create with the skills we have. So I think the healing part for me is discovering the need that someone has for something and then going and using my skill to be able to fill that need. So um, that's definitely the healing part in this little ID card holder specifically for teachers, I'm, I have to say, because they're the people that I that I worked with to figure out how could we make this work? How could we make one just for them? Um, that is definitely the healing part in this. So for me, let me know what the healing part is for you.
I love these. I think that is such a fun hack of two really great patterns from Sally Tomato that you can pull together fairly quickly, make a lot of them. They're probably, I mean, I sell them at craft fairs, so I'm sure you will as well. But definitely if you're looking for a fun little Valentine's treat for the teachers in your life, uh, or anybody who, who needs a lanyard um, with an ID holder, uh, I think this is a, a great uh, little sewn treat for them or for yourself. Uh, again, on the back, we have our two card slots, our pocket in the top to be able to put those tickets and a little bit of cash and lunch money, our ID uh, front place. We added that little woven tag our own tag and then like i said the lanyard is optional you can totally um, add that if you want uh, but i think they're just really great fun little hacks make out of your extra cork your leftover vinyl make them fun so feel free to share these over on my free facebook group or tag me on instagram so I can see the ones that you make for your little teacher valentines or gifts. I'd really love to see them. Uh, I think, again, these are just really a lot of fun. So please like this video if you had fun making this with me. Uh, subscribe if you have not yet. Share with your sewing community friends as well. I think that there's a lot of ways um, that we can judge this up and make it our own and also practice our uh, edge painting as well. So uh, thanks so much for joining me today here at the Thunderbird Handcrafted. Thank you to my Patreons for helping make these videos possible. You know, every week uh, making a video, uh, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's time, it's materials, uh, and I appreciate uh, my Patreon who supports this channel. Uh, if you'd like information about the Patreon, you can check that in the details as well. Have a good one and remember, Crafting is the healing part.